Hi, it's Vic from MemberFix, and in this video I will be showing you how you can create your own set of custom elements using Divi. And here we are on, on our website, and you can see that I've got the Divi Visual Editor loaded, so it's important that we do this in the Visual Editor. You can also do it in the Classic Editor, but generally you're going to want to see how the elements look as you edit them especially when we work with the tablet and mobile views. So in this case, we're going to use the visual editor. And let's just go ahead and create a brand new row. And maybe let's create a feature box. OK, so you have to understand, too, that the, the row and the, any of the elements in the row, that all becomes the new element what I call a custom element, right? And basically you take that whole thing, you put it in your library, and you can use it anytime you want. So let's say, for the sake of example, that we're going to create a feature box. Okay. And we're going to say, we're going to switch to the visual editor here. Okay. And we'll just create sort of bullet points. Bullet points. So point one cool feature awesome stuff okay and maybe above that we can put a nice headline so let's get rid of these bullets and let's say my awesome feature box okay and we'll just make that a bigger element. In fact, you know what? Let's make that completely separate. Let's make the title completely separate. And the reason for that is because you generally want to be able to divide your different elements and give yourself as much flexibility as possible, right? Because we've got this text, but what if we want the headline to be completely separate and we want to style it separately? That's always a good thing to be able to do. So we'll just say, my awesome feature box. OK. And then we'll head into the design section of this text. And let's go ahead and say the text is going to be um, default font, but we'll make it, uh, let's say, semi-bold. And we will. Um, Let's say, make it bigger, obviously. Make it 35, 34. And maybe give it a little shadow. That looks pretty ugly, but just to sort of show you the different stuff that we can do. Maybe use this one instead. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Or maybe this one, this one, whatever. We can change it later. And let's make it centered, OK? And the really cool thing, too, is we can also de define, is this an H1, an H2, an H3? Because as you're doing these elements, you want to make sure you're sort of complying with SEO best practices. I kind of think a feature box would have a H3. Okay, And I kind of like that, too, because if you're using the WordPress Table of Contents plugin, it's going to automatically add the title of the featured box into your Table of Contents. Dokey. Now let's go ahead and drag this element up above the other one. Okay, and now let's edit this one. And let's go ahead and go to design. And let's let's make it a bit bigger, right? It's a little bit small. I think it should be a bit bigger than it is currently. And maybe not that big. Maybe that big, right? And we can make it a different color, but let's just stick with the plain black. That's good. And let's keep it at that. So, so far, all we really have is just a title and some text. But while we have this module and this module, they are both contained inside of a row. So we now have to, we have to play with the row to make it sort of a featured box. And the very first thing that usually you want to change is you want to change the background, right? Because it's a feature box, you want to make sure that you're highlighting it. And 
By the way, notice that next to this text where it says background, there is a little icon, and it's a little mouse click icon. And what it does is it brings up the two states, which is the default state when you haven't uh, moused your mouse over the feature box, or the row in this case, and the hover state. So you can give them different colors. So we, want, we don't want to change the hover state. We want to kind of make it simple um, and not too flashy. So we're just going to change the default state. And let's say we give it an orange background color. Okay, that's a little bit ugly. Maybe let's go with yellow or blue. Blue's a bit ugly. Let's try to find a nice beige color. Nice non-confrontational kind of a color. It's kind of orange, yellow. Okay, whatever. Let's say yellow, even though this is kind of butter yellow. Um, can't decide on a good color here. You don't want to be too loud, right? Okay, let's say, ugh, that's pretty ugly. Let's say blue. Let's keep it simple. Let's say blue. And now you can also see that it'll let you change the background color for different columns. Now in this case, we've only got one column in this row. Okay, but if you had two columns, you could change the different columns. And you can also do the default state and the hover state. So we've got a lot of options out of the box with uh, Divi. And you can see that we've, we can also do background gradients. We can use a background image or even a background video, which is pretty cool if you're building landing pages. But again, in the spirit of keeping it simple, we're just going to keep it like this. Now, I'm also going to give it a label because we want it to be easy to work with later, say, blue feature box. OK? And now let's head over to the design. Now, the sizing is fine, the spacing is fine. Let's give it a little border, right? We really want to highlight the fact that it is a uh, feature box, so it's kind of good to give it a little bit of a border style, I think, right? So let's give it a, uh, let's say, get all these options, let's give it a dashed border style. And let's make the border color, let's say, yellow. This will be the default state again, so I'm selecting the default state, selecting yellow, dashed. And the border width needs to be at least one pixel. Now we've made it two pixels, okay? So make it a bit bigger. Okay, so three pixels. <laughs> again, I realize this, this box is super ugly and it's not what I actually use. I'll show you our actual featured elements that we do use. Um, but this is just a demonstration because you are going to make it to fit your brand. Now we could add a box shadow. I think that's a little tacky. But again, this is just uh, to show you all the options that you've got. Box shadow, so like that. Oh, that's okay, actually. Oh, okay, let's keep this box shadow. It's pretty cool. And you know what? Let's just go back to the background color. I just really can't stand looking at this super ugly color. A little bit lighter. A bit lighter and a little more opaque. Okay, so maybe maybe like that. That's fine. Okay, so we've got our super ugly box, but the text now looks bad, right? Because we weren't really taking the background color of the entire row into consideration when we created this text. We created the text first. Maybe we should have created the row first, but or the box, but. Let's go ahead and edit the text and sort of make it fit the, the box a bit better. So let's go to the text. And let's change the color to maybe white. Oh. There we go. Maybe if we change it to white. OK, that looks a lot better, actually. So let's change it to white, but now it's looking a little bit thin. So let's make it ultra bold. OK, that looks a little bit better, right? So now I've got an, our ultra bold heading, okay, and now we've got our our points here, our bullet points. Now this could be any text you want. Obviously, it's just placeholder text uh, because when you insert it later into your content, you'll just be able to edit it on the fly and obviously add whatever content is necessary for that situation. Um, but as you can see, the the bullet points are kind of hanging off to the left. They're they're flush with the border, the, the box border. So we want to add a little bit of padding. So 
little bit of sizing. So this is sizing. Let's go to spacing. And you can see, by the way, that if I click on this little mobile button, we can make the changes for desktop, tablet, and phone. And this is something you definitely want to do because as you can see that once we select the phone view, the mobile phone view, we can see that our title is compressed. So it's actually better to activate this straight away when you're creating your featured box or your featured elements because that way as you go through and add stuff, you can adjust your elements to make sure they look good on all the views, not just on the desktop view, which is the default view. Okay, so let's say we want to add a little bit of custom margin. Uh, or let's say custom padding, let's say 20. 20 pixels. Oh, that's on the top. It needs to be on the left. So we've got 20 pixels. And now our bullet points are sitting in a much better position, I think. Okay, and in fact, we even want to make it a little bit bigger. Okay, that's better, right? So now we've got a nice little alignment here, looking much better. And um, let's bring up the mobile view and see how it looks there. Okay, desktop looks okay. Tablet looks pretty good. Phone looks pretty good, but obviously we need to change the title. Okay, so we're looking good on all the three views for the second text module. So now let's go back and edit this guy and make sure it looks good on mobile. Okay, so let's go to design, text, and let's go to text size and open the view. So for desktop, we have a good size here, but for tablet, um, it does, it's pretty good. Actually, it's fine on tablet, but on phone, you can see it's a little bit smushed. And actually, this is where we want to change the line height and make it a little smaller. So it was 1.6, sorry, 1.7, now it's 1.6. Okay, but by changing the line height, we also kind of made the box look a bit longer on the top, so it looks like there's a little bit of padding on the top, so let's reduce the padding on the top there. Let's find our spacing tab, there's spacing. Okay our margin, there's our padding. So let's say we're going to give it a uh, negative margin on, on the top. So negative 10. Actually, you know what? Let's give it a negative padding. Wait. Negative 10. Oh, it doesn't let you do a negative padding. Very interesting. Okay. Negative 10. There we go. So what happens if we do negative 20? Negative 20. Okay, that's a little too much. So let's say negative 15. Okay, that's a little too much. Let's do negative 10. Perfect. Okay, so now we have a nice amount of space between the top of the box and the headline. Okay, so now we can say that in all the different views, our box is looking pretty good. Okay, well, it's actually looking terrible, but in terms of what I actually wanted to achieve, it's looking pretty good. Okay, so now anytime I want to use this in, let's say, a blog post, I can simply insert it here. And in fact, you know, let's take the opportunity to show you how we use these different featured images or these fe featured elements, excuse me, in a blog post. Because really, the purpose of sort of creating your set of featured elements is to be able to reuse them to highlight various things in your site. And I've actually got a post here called How to Blog Like a Boss with Divi Theme, where I showcase some of these elements. And bear in mind, you know, cut, cut me a little slack. I'm not a designer. I, have, I don't have much of an eye for design. Um, but what I did do in this post is I sort of highlighted um, some of the different featured elements that we have. And you can see I've got my little info element, which I think looks pretty cool, looks pretty good. Let's, we can check it in our mobile view. Looks pretty good. We can check it in a tablet view. 
Okay, it responds nicely. And this is a really nice thing to just highlight some information, right? Okay, now this is super ugly, but this is our, this is sort of a, a feature, featured box that I created. I'm going to have to delete this because this is just embarrassingly ugly. But I just wanted to put it here to highlight some things, okay? You can tell I created this one, and you can tell our designer created this one. Okay, dokie. So let's see. We've got okay. So here's another one. So we've got our pros and cons list. Now this is another featured element. This is a row that you insert. Now we've got a little light light box uh, feature box, which is kind of cool. I like that. We've got our question mark. We've got our exclamation mark. We've got our check mark. We've got our little highlighted background title. We've got a nice little list, like a little comparison list, and those are basically all of the featured elements that we use. And here's me using the uh, question mark featured element. And here's me using the light bulb featured element. Now these are just, these just happen to be the elements that we created um, or that our designer Leslie created, who, who's also obviously our co-host on the podcast, um, on, the, on this sort of Divi series. And he actually, what I, what I actually asked him to do is I said, Hey, Leslie, can you go through and just create sort of a nice set of featured elements that I can use and reuse all over the site? Um, because I was really inspired by the Authority Hacker guys. They just have these really nice elements. And as you're reading their posts, they highlight all of this information that they want you to sort of be aware of using these kinds of elements. And it just looks really cool. It, it makes a post much less boring. So Leslie created these for me. And now all I have to do is bring them up out of the library, out of the Divi library. And I can just put them in anywhere. Okay, and they're already responsive, already good to go. Now, having said all of that, let's actually save this super ugly featured box as uh, one of our custom elements. And the way you do this is you select the entire row, the entire area that you want to save. So you don't just select the text module, you would select the entire row that surrounds both of your text modules, and you click on this little download looking button. So this is save row to library. Okay, so we will name this Fugly Blue Feature Box. Okay, now uh, what you don't want to do in most cases, probably in 9 out of 10 cases, you, you do not want to make this a global item, because if you make this a global item, what that means is that anywhere that you embed this featured element, if you change it in one place, it's going to automatically push that change to every other place where you've got that featured element embedded. So unless that's what you want, let's say for like a footer uh, or, or a header or something that's, uh, that you do want to change across the entire site, uh, then for sure, or even like a widget, like a, like a sidebar widget, then for sure you could make it a global item. But you cannot unmake it a global item once you've made it a global item. You'd actually have to recreate the, the, the element. Um, so don't do this unless you're absolutely positively sure that you want the changes to be propagated all over the site anytime you make a change anywhere to this element. Um, now we can add it to a category optionally or you create a new category. New category. Let's create the fugly category because I don't want to actually confuse myself. Okie dokie, so now we've added this uh, super fugly blue feature box to the Divi library. Now let's just pop over to the Divi library and take a quick look. So here we are, Divi, Divi library. Okay, oh, actually this is the wrong site. It's our training portal. Okay, let's save and exit. Okay, while he's thinking about that, let's head over to our dashboard. Okay. And go to Divi, Divi library. Okay, and here it is. Here is our fugly blue feature box. It's in the category fugly. And it is a row type. 
It is a row type. Okay. Now you can see down here um, that we've also got a layout type. And a layout type is basically when you create an entire page and you want to save that entire layout um, to the Divi Builder. And um, obviously we, do, we don't want to do that. We're just creating small elements so we don't have to do all that. Um, but just know that it, it can be done. And if you've got this little green globe here, it indicates that it is a global element and anywhere you change it on one page, it's going to change it on all of the other pages where it's embedded. Okay, so now let's go ahead over to our blog and let's just pick a random blog post and embed our super fugly blue feature box into it so you can see kind of how that plays out. So okay, we've got our latest article here about how to set up hosting for your WordPress membership site. And I think I actually didn't do very much in the way of design on this site, or on this uh, page rather, ah, on this post. Um, and you can see it's a pretty long post. It's kind of, oh, here we go. So we actually did use some featured elements here. You can see I've got my little info featured element. And it's not, there it is, there's the eye. The page was still loading. We've got our info featured element. I really like that one. I like blue. I like blue stuff. We've got our uh, our light bulb featured element, but I replaced the light bulb with a globe. This looks pretty ugly, actually. Um, I'll probably have Leslie come in and sort of update all of these for me. Um, but that's okay because the the idea it it doesn't have to be beautiful. It should be beautiful, obviously. Like you should should do your best to make everything look look really nice. Um, but the idea in this case, it's just to break up the content to break up. The, the monotony of just text, 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 right? Okay, we've got some images, more images. Gosh, this is a pretty nice article if I do say so myself. Okay, we've got a, our little checkbox um, custom featured element where I'm adding a, an important note. Okay, more, uh, more screenshots and text. Do we have any more featured elements? Custom elements? I think that might be it. Gosh, this is a long article, right? Okay, so now let's edit this article and let's take a piece of information that we want to highlight and put it in our fugly blue featured box. Okay. And obviously, like you could do all different kinds of elements. You could do your featured boxes. You can do uh, pros and cons lists. You could do all sorts of crazy animations where the stuff comes flying in on the screen. Or uh, basically anything you can build in Divi, you can save to the Divi library and then use it later in your posts and pages. But um, I'm of the opinion that you should just create maybe, I don't know, between three to six kind of really universally useful uh, custom elements that you wouldn't mind seeing over and over in your posts because you don't want to be fiddling trying to create new stuff all the time you want to standardize the process and and keep it nice and seamless for you and for your content creators on your site if you have other people creating stuff on your site which we do all of our techs uh, also write articles now, as soon as this loads, there we go. And this is just my Wi-Fi acting up. I'm not going to blame Divi. Divi is very fast, actually. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we've got our Divi Builder. Now, notice that uh, we are using a custom template for our blog, which makes the entire uh, layout very thin. You can see we've got quite a lot of padding on either side of this column. Um, so that changes the the custom elements a little bit because you know the way that we had it when we were designing it, it was across the entire page, it was full width. But now when we bring it up, it's going to be constrained by this outer container. Okay, so let's just pick a piece of information that seems super important and let's highlight it. 
Okay, so here's, okay, here's one. Who to trust? Trust is important. Okay, of course. So, that means we should actually change this to click base style. Okay. Ah, okay, that's why it's doing that. This is a big, long, one big, long text row. Yeah, that's why. So we need to pick a row that's a separate row, that's a separate row of text. Okay, this is all one big blob of text, more or less. Actually, let's go all the way to the end here. Okay, so here we go. We're talking about uh, setting up WordPress. Okay, setting up WordPress, it's super important. So let's go ahead and take this text and let's put it in our featured box. So let's go ahead and add a featured custom element right here. I'm going to add it from the library in the fugly category. You have not saved any items to your Divi library yet. I have to. It's all categories. Fugly. Okay, that's super weird. Oh, I know why. It's because I'm trying to add a module, but we have to add an entire row because our element type was a row. So we've got our fugly blue feature box right here. Aha, there she blows. Okay, now immediately you can see that the padding on the top of this box is a little bit lacking. So we probably want to actually edit this featured box and uh, give it a little bit of padding to work with. So let's do that straight away. Now the really cool thing is every time you insert one of your custom elements, um, you get to sort of treat it as a new element. In other words, you can edit it in every single place that you insert it. So let's go to design. Spacing, eh, let's add a little bit of padding on the top, 10 pixels. Oh crap. That's spacing, custom margin. There we go. Okay, so 10 pixels of margin, not padding. Okay, and again, let's open it up in the different views, make sure it looks cool. Where'd she go? All the way at the bottom. Uh, here we go. Okay, that looks okay. Phone. Crap, it brings it all the way up to the top. Okay, phone looks okay. No problemo. So let's go back to desktop and let's save the element. Okay. And now what we want to do is we want to take this title Title is setting up WordFence. Ah, you know, it's a real problem when you have a computer as old as mine because it can kind of be goofy. Okay, um, and you know what's really cool, and I'll do this now is we can customize how the builder functions. For example, I really, I'm really annoyed by this, the builder coming up on the side and squishing the screen and changing the dimensions. So instead of making a fixed right bar, let's make it a floating minimum size by default. And that way, it's not gonna mess with us. Okay, 
cool. So now, if I highlight this text and then go to edit this module, it comes up as a little floating thing. Right. There we go. Setting up WordFence. Boom. Okay. Now maybe we don't need um, we don't need bullet points, so we're going to get rid of them. Actually, let's go back and just override them. Okay. Let's highlight this text and. Now we'll highlight this text and we'll overwrite the text that we had. And obviously we're going to need to edit it to get rid of the little bullet point. We don't need that. And there we go. Okay, so now we've got our super ugly blue feature box and you can see that um, now that we're sort of seeing it in desktop, there's a few design issues with it. One, the text is going all the way to the right edge of the box, but it's far from the left edge of the box. So we have to fix that. We can also see that we've got about you know a centimeter of space between the title and the top of the box, but we've got a little bit less space between the end of the text and the bottom of the box. So let's just fix those up real quick by editing the respective modules. So let's go to design. Okay, and let's actually actually want it a little bit out of the way. Okay, that's no problem. Um, let's say spacing. Okay, we're on desktop. So we've got 50 padding to the left, which would explain why um, it's bleeding to the right, but not to the left. So what that means is we should probably have 50 padding to the right. And look what it does, it creates a column of 50 pixels to the left, 50 pixels to the right, and now it's nicely centered in that column of 50 pixels. Now let's add a little bit of uh, padding on the bottom, let's say uh, 10 pixels. Okay, now that's looking much better, isn't it? That looks much nicer. Actually. I'm not going to go so far to say is it's fugly. I'll just say it's ugly. I'll just say it's ugly. Okay. So now instead of your mundane run-of-the-mill title, um, you've got your nice and ugly title here, and you've got your text here, and you are breaking up sort of the visual monotony of. Uh, of what you would generally do. Now again, this should be set as an H3 heading. So heading text should be H3. Okay. Text, text size, text size. Okay. And the reason this is important again is because if, like us, you use a table of contents plugin, which you can't actually see in the Divi editor, you can only see it when the page is loaded, then you want to make sure that your headings, or your headers, um, are being included in the table of contents for SEO purposes and obviously for navigation purposes. Um, that is the thing that you want to do. Okay, now this is super ugly. I'm not actually going to keep this on this post, but now you've seen that you can create all sorts of different elements save them to your Divi library, and then reuse them over and over and over again to sort of spice up your blog posts. And I'll, I'll also point out that uh, all of these elements, we load them the same exact way. So we basically, so for example, this little blue info element, uh, let's say I want to load that one. We're gonna create a new row add from the library, and this is our version 2 blue info feature box, and there it is. 
and you can see that it loads with a little bit of uh, placeholder text which you can replace in, into whatever you want. But in this case, obviously, we don't want to keep any of these changes. We're going to discard these changes. But that is the way that you create your custom featured uh, elements in Divi. And I just want to show you again, just to give you a, uh, another, another website that does this really, really well. And this is actually who inspired me to, to have this done, um, is authorityhacker.com. Uh, and this is uh, Authority Hacker, Gail and Mark um, are actually our customers, our, they're MemberFix customers. And you can see that they really, really nail design and the look and the feel of their site. Now they use a bit of a different stack, so they're not using Divi. Uh, they're using Elementor plus Astra, which is a lovely combination as well. Um, obviously, you know that we're, we're all in on Divi. Um, but ev basically, everything that's here, you could do with Divi. Like this whole setup can be completely done with Divi, pixel for pixel, basically, right? Um, including these uh, animations. Okay, and this looks really, really good. This is an awesome upside down landing page. Um, and what we want to do is scroll down all the way to the bottom and go to their, oh gosh, where there's, where's their blog? I think it's here. There we go. There we go. Okay, so once you get past the landing page, you get to the actual site. You also notice it loads really quickly. And the Authority Hacker guys are really very uh, fanatical about their hosting. They're on Kinsta, which is really nice hosting company. We use Cloudways. Um, similar kind of a value proposition. Kinsta is a little bit more uh, of a managed situation. Um, now if we go to the blog and let's say we just pick a random post. Uh, let's say Elementor Review. What you're going to notice is that um, they're using similar kinds of situations. So if you think from a Divi perspective, if you think it, think of it as sort of a Lego, Lego blocks building exercise, you know, we're basically building rows and we're building columns and we're building elements that go into those rows and columns. And if you think of this whole big purple, this whole big purple area as a row, which it is in Elementor, I'm sure this is a row, you can see that it's a, it's actually two rows. So, okay, we've got the first row here, which is full width. It's a one column row, and this is where the um, text, the header text, and the subheader text goes. And directly underneath it, we've got a secondary row, which is a two column row, which looks like it's split 50% to the left, and 50% to the right, which has the same exact background color, which is why it feels like one row, even though it's really two rows. And on the left side of the column, on the left column, we've got an, an image. And on the right column, we've got some text, a call to action module, and another text module. OK, so this is exactly what you would do with Divi. And this is a blog post. This isn't a landing page, but it sort of feels like a landing page, which is the idea. Especially if you're if you're pushing uh, affiliate products, you want to get people to click and you want them interested and engaged. Now here again, we've got a uh, one, two, three, four column row. Okay, and in the first column we've got an image, and then underneath that we've got some nice looking text, uh, and then we've got some stars and we've got some text. Now this could all be one custom element that you create. Uh, as a boilerplate, and you can just take it out of the Divi library, insert it every time that you need it, wherever you might need it, and then just change the star ratings and change the, the uh, icons and the text. Okay, now we've got a call to action element. And hey, looky here, we've got our uh, pros and cons uh, feature box, um, which is kind of where I got the idea. Now you can see that their their style is a little bit different, and they like obviously this is sort of a designer's designer's outlook, which I'm not a designer, but I can see that for example, on the pros uh, widget, we've got maybe like a quarter of a centimeter or like a half a centimeter space between uh, the left side of the box and the check mark, and here it's a little bit bigger. 
Okay, so they didn't really standardize this, but it's like a super minor thing, but it just goes to show you that it's the same situation whether you use Elementor or Divi. You've got to make sure you test it on all of the uh, different uh, views. Make sure it looks good on mobile. Looks great on mobile. Okay. Um, and then at, after that, you've basically just got a bunch of text and images. Oh, look at this. Pro tip. Look at this really nice, clean, featured box. This is beautiful. So it's just a, a, a row with a light blue background and a bottom border, which is dark blue, which looks like it's about two pixels uh, wide. And it's a solid blue border. Um, it just got a little bit of header text and a little bit of regular text. And that's it. A very simple custom element. And you can see them reusing that custom element over and over as needed. Okay, let's look a little bit further. This is a, these guys publish monster posts. Oh, this is SoundCloud, okay. Um, looks like most of this is screenshots. Screenshots, screenshots, screenshots. Do we have any more custom elements? I think that about does it. Let's just scroll a bit quicker. Aha. Oh, this is an image as well. Okay. Man, this is a big post, huh? These guys are killing it. Okay, let's go all the way to the bottom. And here we've got your call to action, which is the final sort of custom element. And um, which is, you'll probably, it, when you're creating your, your custom elements, you'll probably want to create your calls to action as well. You want to be able to get people to click on stuff that you want them to click on. Um, and then we've got, you know, the author byline. And then we've got a, uh, this is basically in, in Divi, now this isn't Divi, but in Divi, this would basically just be a global row that gets automatically attached to every blog post. And so would this be, and so would the footer, which is probably all the way down at the bottom with this little call to action. Okay, guys, so this is, uh, this is kind of a long video, and I hope you understood the concept of what I did, and I hope you could see past the super ugly element that I created because I'm not a designer. In fact, uh, while we're on the topic, dividesignservice.com, all of our design for all of our websites, for all of our Divi stuff, is done by my good friend and business partner, Leslie, who runs DiviDesignService.com. So if you need help with any of this, if you want to just delegate it, get in touch with Leslie. He is the best at Divi. He's, I mean, look at, look at how awesome his site looks. He just absolutely creates super beautiful sites in Divi. He creates membership sites in Divi as well. Um, and, and they look amazing. He has a watercolors membership site in Divi, so be sure to check that out. It's called learnwatercolors.net. Let's take a look at that real quick. Get some eye candy for the Divi lovers amongst us. Okay. Look at that. Yeah, Divi lets you do these cool wavy borders, so you don't have to do just a solid border or a dashed border. You can do a wavy border or a, or a kind of a diagonal border. Um, you can see it's a really nice landing page. I don't know why these icons aren't loading. They must have cached something. But anyway, you guys get the point. You can create your custom elements, save them to your Divi library, use them in your blog posts and on your pages, landing pages and so forth. And once you create them one time and optimize them for desktop, mobile and tablet, you don't have to create them again. It's a one-time thing, you just reuse them and you're good to go. So if you need help creating your elements, my team can certainly help you with that. And of course, I won't be the one to do it. Um, you, wouldn't want, you wouldn't want me to do that for sure. And uh, if you have any questions, just leave your comments and let me know if you'd like me, if you have any suggestions about future videos uh, that you'd like uh, me to make regarding Divi 
or that you'd like Leslie to help with um, or join me to discuss, just let us know and uh, have a great day.